Olivier was born to a wealthy white father and a black mother in New Orleans, Christmas Eve, 1920, caught between two worlds from the day she was born. Her father had her privately educated while her grandfather raised her. Well, you finally told me because everybody, the white kids were beating me up, the black kids were beating me up, everybody was jumping on me. If it wasn't for because of my father's money, it was because of being black, being a Negro with a white face. Yeah. So he told me if I didn't stop running, I'd be running the rest of my life. And when I was 15, I stopped running, and I haven't run a day since. After leaving home, Stormy sang with jazz bands across the country, developing the silvery baritone that would serve her well in her next incarnation. So I tried to do the proper thing, you know, wear men's clothes on stage and wear women's clothes on the street. I got picked up twice for being a drag queen. Well, the guy uh, that arrested me once for being a drag queen came in the club and he said, uh, uh, and he said, you don't know how to tie. I said, well, if I'm not tying my tie right, why don't you come in every night and show me how I'm supposed to tie? And he did. To this day, I can tie a bow tie with even looking in the mirror, and it'll be perfect. And he was always laughing. He was a nice man. He was only doing his job, you know. In 1955, Stormy became the one girl in the Jewel Box Review, a traveling musical show of gender deception. While her girlfriend watched from the wings, Stormy would now perform as a man. Somebody told me that I couldn't do it and that I, I would completely ruin my reputation and that people did not have enough problems being black. I said, I didn't have any problem with it. Everybody else did. She made a very handsome man. <laughs> it worked for her. In June of 1969 in New York City, Stormy found herself at the epicenter of the Stonewall Riots. If there was a friend in need, Stormy would be there. That was no riot. Everybody says it's a riot. It was, it was a, a, a it was a, a disobedience, and then they started fighting back. It was a rebellion. And once they got the hang of it, <laughs> they, they rebelled quite well. Well, many different people say that there was a cross-dressing lesbian who sparked the Stonewall Riot, but to the best of my knowledge, no one had ever found someone who fit the description quite as well as she does until I interviewed her, and she said, the cop hit me and I hit him back. I walked away with him, an eye bleeding, but he was laying on the ground, out. She says, I was there and I did this, but then when I read an account of the cross-dressing lesbian who started the riot, she said, oh, I know who that was, but I'm not going to say. Well, I got into it by accident. And then uh, <laughs> Charles Kaiser, when he wrote his book, uh, Gay Metropolis, was trying to figure out how it started when the fight really started. They were just running around, you know, calling uh, names and things and throwing toilet paper down from the windows and what have you. And I just walked up. I, I used to come in whenever I came in town to go down to see if anybody needed help or if they were in jail, I could get them out, what, what I could do. I looked like I was 20, but when that happened, I was 40, 48 years old. In the month following those fateful nights, Stormy's girlfriend of 26 years passed away, and Stormy gave up her performing career.